Hello everyone, I'm Yasemin Tabatagoi and in this talk I'm going to present a paper Phylogenomic Branchling Estimation Using Quartets that is a joint work with Charles Zhang, Tandy Warno, and C.L.S. Miara. In phylogenomics, a core problem is to estimate the evolutionary history of a set of species often modeled as a species tree. And to estimate this evolutionary history, we usually use the genome sequences of these species which can give us some information about how closely related the species are. But a common phenomenon is that the trees estimated on different regions within the genome, which are called gene tree, can be different from each other and from the species tree. Uh, and this is a challenge for species tree estimation from uh, these multi-locus data sets. This gene tree discordance can have several causes. Uh, a major cause of it is incomplete lineage sorting, or ILS, that can be mathematically modeled by the multi-species coalescent center MSC. Um, MSC models a random process that describes the way alleles coalesce in populations of individuals and when two lineages don't coalesce at their common ancestor, uh, for example as shown in the yellow box here, it results in ILS that creates the opportunity for gene tree discordance. Uh, a traditional approach for estimating the species trees is to concatenate all gene sequence alignments into a super matrix and then give the super alignment to a phylogeny invariance method, such as a maximum likelihood to infer the species tree. Uh, an inherent assumption in this approach is that all gene alignments evolved on a single tree, uh, which is not true when we have gene tree discordance. A second class of methods that have become popular in the past years are summary methods, such as astral, uh, and they first estimate an individual gene tree for each gene alignment, and then combine these gene trees into the species tree using the summary method. Summary methods are now increasingly used because they're more scalable and more accurate when ILS is high, but a shortcoming for their application is that they produce branch lengths in coalescent units, which are not useful for downstream analysis. And so the studies that use the summary methods are forced to take a two-step approach to get the species tree with its branch lengths. Uh, in the first step, they estimate the topology of the tree using a summary method, and in the second step, they infer branch lengths and the topology using concatenation or uh, other methods that don't account for gene tree discordance. But a major problem with this approach is that the branch length estimation step ignores gene tree heterogeneity across the genome. Uh, and this approach has been criticized in the literature because of this issue. Most downstream analysis need a species tree with branch lengths in the units of expected number of substitutions per site or substitution units. Uh, and some example applications of the substitution unit branch lengths are dating, comparative genomics, species delimitation, as well as many others. Um, the coalescent unit branch lengths that are inferred by summary methods don't directly lead to substitution unit branch lengths, and they can only be inferred for internal branches that further limits their use. So our motivation for this work was to fill this gap and design a branch length estimation method that produces lengths and substitution units. Uh, while addressing gene tree heterogeneity due to ILS and also allowing for variation in mutation rates across the species tree, uh, meaning that we don't assume a strict molecular clock. Uh, we also wanted the method to have a strong theoretical foundation and be scalable to large genome-wide data sets. To get us started, we consider an extension of the multi-species coalescent model that allows for varying mutation rates across the species tree branches. Uh, for example, here we have an unbalanced species tree with four leaves, where each branch of the species tree is furnished with a substitution rate mu, a branch length in coalescent units t, and a branch length in substitution units tau, which is what we want to estimate, and is the coalescent unit length multiplied by substitution rate for that branch. And because we allow for varying mutation rates across the species tree branches, the tree with substitution unit length is non ultrametric as shown on the left. So when a gene tree evolves inside a species tree, its branches inherit the substitution rates of all the branches of the species tree that it passes through. For example, the yellow branch in this gene tree is passing through three branches of the species tree, and so its length becomes the sum of the tree parts, uh, which are TA mu A plus T1 mu 1 plus X mu 2. And we can compute similar values for the other branches. So gene tree branch lengths are a function of the species tree parameters under this model. And so going backwards, we can estimate the branch lengths of the species tree using gene tree branch lengths. To do this, uh, we first need to compute the expected value of each branch in the gene trees. 
As an example, assume we want to compute the expected length of the internal branch in a gene tree that has the same unrooted topology as the species tree. So the length of the internal branch is the sum of the two parts t1 minus x mu1 plus y mu2. But because x and y are variables between 0 and t1 uh, or t2 respectively, we need to integrate over these intervals to compute the expected length, which gives us uh, such an equation. Here we also need the probability density function that we can calculate using the properties of the MST model. For example, here the probability of these two lineages not coalescing in an interval of length x is e to the minus x and similarly for y, uh, giving us this probability density function. But uh, this is not the only possible scenario and we can have several other patterns of coalescence. For example, rather than these two lineages coalescing uh, inside branch T2, they can coalesce above the root and this gives a different length for the internal branch and also a different probability function. So we enumerated all of these possible coalescence patterns. Um, here we see scenarios for gene trees that match the unrooted topology of the species tree, but non-matching gene trees are similar. And then we calculate their expected lengths as I explained before. And we finally get such an equation that gives the expected length of the internal branch in a gene tree conditioned on a gene tree matching the topology of the species tree. And we computed similar expected values for non-matching gene trees and for all terminal branches in a quartet tree. Uh, this gives us two equations for each branch, in total 10 equations for a quartet. And these equations enable us to estimate the parameters of the model tree from the expected gene tree branch lengths. But the challenge is that solving this system of equations directly could cause numerical instabilities. So instead, we use some simplifying assumptions to get analytical formulas for every branch in the species tree. If we look at the same example as before, these are the equations that we get for the expected internal branch length for matching and non-matching gene trees and they're based in several parameters of the species tree. To simplify this and eliminate some of these parameters, we assume that the mutation rate of the parent and the grandparent of the internal branch, which are mu2 and mu3, are the same. Uh, note that this assumption does not completely break our initial assumption of rate variation across species tree branches because we are ignoring the rate for only one branch. This gives us much simpler equations and reduces the number of parameters so we can directly estimate T1 and mu1 from these. Um, we use similar simplifying assumptions for other branches. And this gives us an estimation formula for each branch in a quartet species tree based on the values that we can estimate from gene trees. Uh, and these are summarized in this table. So we saw how we can estimate the branch length of the species tree for a quartet by taking ILS and rate variation into account. Um, moving on to larger trees, we present castles that takes the rooted species tree topology and a set of gene trees with substitution unit branch lengths as input uh, and outputs the species tree with substitution unit lengths. We use a quartet-based approach similar to summary methods such as Astral. Each internal branch of the species tree divides a set of taxa into four parts here shown with A, B, C, and D. In selecting one taxa from each of these four parts in a gene tree produces a quartet. So we average branch lengths in the gene tree's overall possible quartets across each branch. Some of these quartets match the topology of the species tree and contribute to matching average lengths and some of them contribute to non-matching average lengths. To compute these average lengths, rather than naively listing all quartets in O of n to the fourth, we use a sophisticated dynamic programming algorithm that has a runtime of O of n squared k uh, for n species and k genes. And so the Castle's algorithm for large trees works as follows. Uh, we first calculate these average lengths for each branch of the species tree using dynamic programming. Then we do a post-order travel cell over all internal nodes of the species tree, and for each node, we set the length of the branch above it using the internal branch equation we have seen before. If this node was sister to a leaf, we also set the length of the sister branch using the middle terminal branch equation. Finally, if the node was parent to a cherry, we also set the lengths of the two branches under it using terminal cherry branch equations. And we continue like this until all branches are assigned the length. 
The overall runtime is also of n squared k, and in practice, it takes about 50 seconds to estimate branch lengths on a 100 taxon species tree with 1,000 genes on average. Uh, so it's also quite fast in practice. To summarize, uh, we derived expected branch lengths for gene trees that match or do not match a guarded species tree under this extension of the multi-species coalescent model. Uh, then we presented simplifications that gave analytical formulas for each branch in a quartet. And finally, we introduced castles that uses these quartet-based equations to estimate branch lengths in an arbitrary large species tree. And now we'll see some empirical results. For our experimental study, we modified the simulation tool SimPy to generate ground root species trees and gene trees with substitution unit branch lengths. Uh, and we used different methods to estimate branch lengths and a true species tree topology uh, and compare them using several measures of error and multiple data sets. Here we are seeing a comparison on a quartet simulated data set with true gene trees between three methods, uh, castles, Arable that computes a weighted average across gene tree branch lengths, uh, and a method that takes the minimum across gene tree branch lengths that we have called glass-like because it's doing something similar to what is done in the species tree estimation method glass. Uh, the y-axis shows logarithmic error that is ideally zero. Uh, when the estimated branch lengths are underestimating the true branch lengths, it becomes negative, and when we have overestimation, it becomes positive. Uh, we have two conditions, one without red heterogeneity across genes, and one with red heterogeneity. Uh, when we don't have red heterogeneity across genes, uh, we can get ideal branch lengths with this glass-like method. Uh, the error is close to zero and it has no bias. Uh, but as we add red heterogeneity across genes, which always happens in reality, the error becomes too large and we have a severe underestimation. Uh, but castles and herbal are almost robust rate heterogeneity across genes. Uh, but the error on average is lower for castles, uh, and herbal has an overestimation bias in both conditions, but castles is relatively unbiased on average. The pattern that we saw for bias also holds for larger trees. Here we see results in a data set with 100 taxon trees and 1,000 genes in a condition with moderate ILS. Uh, in addition to the methods in the previous slide, we have also added uh, concatenation using RAXML. So similar to results for Cortez, the glass-like method has a large underestimation bias. Uh, Arable and Castles are almost unbiased for internal branches, shown with blue. Uh, Arable, however, is biased for terminal branches, but Castles is relatively unbiased in this case as well. Uh, finally, concatenation is a slightly biased towards overestimation for internal branches, but has a much uh, larger bias for terminal branches. So in general, for methods other than castles, the bias is higher for terminal branches than for internal branches, and, th and this is a pattern that we saw in all of our experiments. So it seems that for other methods, estimating terminal branches is harder than internal branches because uh, we've got higher error and larger bias in this case. Here we see a comparison between methods and conditions with different levels of ILS in a 30 taxon data set with 500 genes. Uh, we've removed the glass-like method because it had very high error in this data set. So as the ILS level increases, the error for all methods increase, but castles is less impacted than the other methods. Um, in the condition with lowest ILS, concatenation is the most accurate. Uh, castles comes as second, followed by errorable. But in the rest of the conditions, Castles is more accurate and its error increases more slowly than the other methods. Uh, concatenation, in contrast, gets the largest impact and it starts off as the best method and ends up the worst in the high ILS conditions. And finally, here we see a comparison between the branch lengths produced by Castles and concatenation in a mammalian biological data set with 37 species. Um, while the trees are similar in many of the branches and have similar diameter, some of the branches here shown with different colors are much longer in the concatenation tree. And for example, the distance between the clays containing the hominids uh, with the roots of the placental mammals is almost twice longer in the tree with concatenation branch lengths. While we don't know the truth on biological data, the fact that concatenation produces longer branches uh, was also seen in simulated data 
Uh, but in similar data, concatenation had an overestimation bias, but Casals was much less biased. To summarize, we introduced Casals, that is a method for estimating branch lengths of a species tree given gene tree branch lengths that accounts for gene tree heterogeneity due to ILS and allows for variation in mutation rates. And we saw that in many conditions, it produces more accurate and less biased branch lengths than the previous methods. Uh, as feature direction, it's important to look at other sources of gene tree discordance like gene duplication and loss and horizontal gene transfer and explore data sets with more challenging conditions, uh, such as data sets with missing data. Uh, and finally, a theoretical question is whether these substitution unit branch lengths are identifiable, uh, and if so, whether CASELS is statistically consistent under this extension of the MSC model. And with that, I would like to thank my co-authors, Charles Zhang, Tandy Warno, Sia Vashmira Rab, and all the funding resources. Uh, thanks for listening.